Top 7 Mega Project Demolitions Gone Wrong From buildings collapsing with workers still inside to a factory rolling towards an apartment complex, a lot can go wrong when demolishing a mega project. Experts spend a significant amount of time preparing to ensure that the building falls correctly and that no one's injured. But that doesn't always happen, as you'll see. Here are some of the world's most destructive demolition failures in recent history. So if you'd like to see some of the demolition fails, keep watching. Let's kick off this list with the Vordenborg Silo. The demolition of this giant silo in Vordenborg, Denmark was a monumental undertaking due to its height of 53 meters. Workers had to make certain that the explosives were placed in the proper location. Unfortunately, the building came crashing down sideways rather than straight down, making things even more challenging. The silo was directly across the street from the city's library and cultural center. During the collapse, workers cleared the area and detonated the explosives that had been placed there. One of the sides of the building at the base did not collapse and remained intact. This resulted in the entire building collapsing onto the library directly across the street. Those who witnessed the failed demolition could not believe what they were seeing as a large portion of the administration offices and portions of the library were destroyed. When the demolition was investigated, it was discovered that the explosives had not been properly set, resulting in the building falling in the opposite direction of the intended fall. Our next one on the list is Plant, Springfield, Ohio. A funnel building at a power plant in Ohio was scheduled to be demolished by the end of 2010. During the demolition, the large, narrow-bodied funnel was intended to fall on an area that had been designated as safe and clear. Things went horribly wrong when the structure collapsed in the exact opposite direction of the wind, shocking everyone who was watching. The fall put many people's lives in danger and caused nearly $14 million in property damage. The building can be seen falling directly on power lines directly across the street from the building, where workers were only a few feet away at the time. 4,000 local homes were left without power as a result of the disaster, which was made worse by the fact that the building fell onto the train tracks. The disruption was unlike anything the residents had ever experienced before, and it's safe to say that they weren't pleased with the situation. Moving on to the next one, we'll talk about the St. Petersburg Sports Complex. St. Petersburg Sports Complex was scheduled to be demolished in 2020 to make way for a larger and better construction project, despite the fact that it had hosted several major games and high-profile concerts in recent years. When workers began making precision cuts around the stadium in order to ensure that the structure would fall correctly when explosives were detonated, they removed most of the connections between the walls and the roof when, without warning, the entire structure came crashing down around them. There were many workers still inside the building when the structure began to collapse around them, injuring many and killing one of them. Fourth on this list is, any guesses? The Turkish Flower Factory. Sometimes the buildings that need to be demolished are surrounded by other structures, and onlookers are delighted to see the structures crumble. When demolition experts begin to demolish a structure, they must conduct extensive planning to ensure that the structure falls in the proper direction and causes the least amount of damage. Demolition professionals would normally rely on records detailing how a building was constructed to safely demolish old structures. The flower factory, built in 1928, was no longer in operation after the company went bankrupt. By the time it was demolished, it had been standing for nearly 100 years, and there were no records of how the building was constructed. Without it, the experts would have to guess where the explosives should be placed, but they didn't realize how sturdy the factory was. Instead of falling straight down, the building rolled onto its side, gained momentum, and eventually ended up on its roof. Its support structures proved to be surprisingly strong. Fortunately, the building came to a halt as it was just about to damage the nearby apartment complex, and no one was injured. At the end of the day, this failed demolition was a testament to the craftsmanship of construction workers in the 1920s. Another high-profile demolition was the Royal Canberra Hospital. The demolition of the Royal Canberra Hospital, which occurred in the early 1990s, was one of the deadliest examples of a demolition gone wrong. In Australia, a controversial new demolition project targeted this hospital, which was built in the early 1900s. The developers intended to demolish the structure in order to make way for a new museum complex. To appease the public and avoid causing any further damage to the surrounding area, explosives were strategically placed within the building. The goal was for the building itself to implode inwards rather than causing any further damage to the surrounding area. As you can probably guess, things didn't turn out quite as planned. 
Despite efforts, the explosion grew much larger than anticipated, and the impact of the falling building was too great to contain. The debris started shooting out of the dust cloud at high speeds, reaching distances of up to 500 meters from the construction site. The demolition had attracted a large number of onlookers, many of whom ended up in the line of fire. Unfortunately, many people were injured, and a young girl lost her life as a result of the incident. A second explosive demolition was refused permission by authorities, who instead ordered that it be destroyed manually. Next on the list is a feed mill in South Dakota. This feed mill was significantly more challenging than employees realized because the structure had been vacant for several years. It was scheduled to be demolished. In the east side of the building, there was a large banner with the word boom written on it, perhaps as a warning to anyone thinking of sneaking into the building before it came tumbling down, or perhaps as a means of attracting spectators to witness the massive structure coming tumbling down. Tragically, a large majority of the town turned out to witness the devastation of one of their most historic structures. Unfortunately, they would be disappointed because the demolition did not live up to the expectation. Clearly visible is the way the building's foundation was blown away by pre-positioned explosives, causing the structure to fall straight down as intended. Although it did fall a few feet, the rest of the structure was unharmed and remained standing. For the general public, this is a minor disappointment, but it was a major problem for the workers. When the first wave of explosives fails to bring down a building, a team must either plant additional explosives or manually demolish the structure's strongest structural supports. There's no safe option at this point because it's impossible to predict exactly how the building will collapse. Fortunately, this demolition was safely completed only a few weeks later. And last but not least is the Avondale Mills Smokestack. Not every demolition project necessitates large sums of money and large numbers of workers. When a building needs to be demolished in an urban setting, such as a bustling city, the task is significantly more difficult and involves significantly more risk. However, when the demolition takes place in a rural setting, such as the middle of nowhere, the task is significantly less difficult and involves significantly less risk. Buildings on farmland or on privately owned land in a remote location are the responsibility of the property owner, since it's understandable that owners would prefer not to spend a lot of money and time on experts and equipment, many opt to do it themselves. A large smokestack in the town of Pella, Alabama needed to be demolished. A small group of workers attempted the demolition without explosives, but instead they chose to use their own machinery to chip away at the foundation's masonry walls. Bricks were torn out of the building piece by piece until the structure collapsed. The smokestack initially fell straight down, but then it shifted directions and came crashing down on the driver from above. As hundreds of tons of bricks plummeted towards the truck's driver, onlookers gasped. As he attempted to flee, he was unable to do so quickly enough. He was crushed beneath the hundreds of pounds of bricks. The onlookers rushed to his aid and were relieved to discover that he was still alive. He walked away from the situation relatively unscathed, but he was a little shaken up after realizing how close he had come to death. Do you know any other demolition disasters that we haven't mentioned? Let us know and check out some more mega project disasters here.